Standing by on the line right now is Congressman Anthony Brindisi. Good morning, Congressman. Good morning. Good morning, Bill. Is it true you broke the clicker? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen, you I think that's good, old people. I, I took so much advantage of, of that uh, deluxe package, I couldn't even say clicker. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lordy. Well, all right. So while we were gone, the uh, the Mueller report came out. What's your take? Have you read it? Um, there are some Democrats talking about impeachment. What do you think? I did read it over the weekend. Finally got a chance to read it. Uh, I, you know, I have to say that uh, I, I don't think the president should be really proud of the conclusions, nor do I think the, the Democrats should be cheering uh, with any of the findings in the report. Uh, what's clear to me is that a, a foreign adversary, yeah. uh, Russia, interfered in our elections. That should trouble everybody, whether you're a Democrat or Republican. It's clear the, the president and people around him uh, willingly accepted some help. Uh, having said that, the re- report comes back saying that, that there is no, uh, no collusion, and that should make everybody happy, I think. Yeah, we should yeah. be happy that there was no collusion. And the question is, where do we go from here? The, the, you know, the AG has said that there's no obstruction of justice, and... Uh, there are people in Congress who want to continue on down that road, but uh, people have to realize that we're in a we're in a divided government. So even if the House were to impeach the president, which I don't think they should, uh, the Senate would never convict him, and we'd spend the next year and a half, yeah, yeah, uh, just like we did in the late nineties with Bill Clinton. You say no obstruction, though, but uh, Mueller really did point out several areas. Um, it's almost like he was he was creating a, a list of things that. Boy, they came very, very close to obstruction. And oftentimes the only reason that his attempt to obstruct justice didn't go through is because the people he was mandating to obstruct the justice chose not to do it. So right. uh, what's your take on on that? I mean, uh, his intent was there, it seemed. Yeah, well, there's a question of that. Uh, I know the White House lawyer, Don McGahn, uh, had rejected some of the president's uh, attempts to fire Mueller. And I, like I said, if I were the president, I would not be proud or cheering the results of this report. It's very troublesome. Many of yeah. the findings in here are troublesome. Yeah. Uh, not just accepting the help of, of Russia, but attempts to try and prevent uh, investigations. But the fact that the investigation happened, the fact that we're all here reading the report today and talking about the report, I think, shows that this uh, this uh, that, that justice was not obstructed, that uh, Mueller was able to do his job, uh, was not interfered with, that we see the results now, and we should move on now as a country, focusing on issues that yep. the American people want us to, to work on. I have to tell you, one of the things that uh, I always said was let Mueller do his job. Um, I, I think he's an upstanding citizen, to say the least, not to mention the, the public service uh, that he's given to, to his country, but somebody that is, that really, I think, is, is somebody that is, that is honest. Uh, and be very careful, because it might not make Democrats look all that good. And the question has to be asked, uh, how did Obama and that administration allow this, when they knew this interference was going on from Russia, how did they allow it to go on? That was on his watch. A great question. I don't know why they would allow it to go on. I don't know why they would allow it not to be brought to light. Uh, it's very problematic, and it, it really gives a green light to countries like Russia and China or other countries down the road uh, to interfere in our elections. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a, that's a big problem, and that's really what should be the focus of this administration, this Congress, is how do we prevent a future attempt by a foreign adversary, an adversary, one of our greatest threats, yeah. Russia. Uh, from doing something like this again. Uh, we want to be sure, we want the American people to be sure in their uh, their election systems that our elections are going to go forward uh, uninterrupted by any outside influence. Um, what are you hearing from constituents? Uh, do people call the office? Do they reach out to you when you're, when you're uh, face-to-face with someone? What are you hearing on, the, on, on all of this? Well, I, I got to be honest. When I, uh, and I and I said this to a few reporters, and I, I always tell reporters up uh, in Washington, down in Washington, that you should come to a town hall meeting with me because when when I do a town hall, very rarely, I'm not going to say it doesn't come up because it does come up, but very rarely do you uh, get a question about the Russia investigation or Mueller. Now, having said that, when I do a town hall, I probably get 50 questions this week. Uh, but in any event, 
uh, it, typically it's about the, just the issues that people are worried about in this congressional district when they wake up in the morning. They're worried about uh, the, the high cost of their prescription drugs. They're, they're worried about the opioid epidemic. They want to make sure that, jo- that jobs and the economy are moving forward. They're worried about their health care costs. Those are the things that you hear most about on the campaign trail. And when you're out there talking to constituents, it's what drives the calls and emails into our office. And that's what we should be focusing on as a country. How do we figure out some of these issues and try and, try and uh, achieve uh, some solutions to the great problems that we're facing? Yeah. Uh, I do want to ask you, um, you're, you're in through your first 100 days. What have you learned? What do you, what's your takeaway? Uh, my, my takeaway is uh, people are always asking what, what surprised you the most of being there. And I, I guess coming from a legislative background, I wasn't really surprised. I, I, I kind of knew what to expect. I knew that uh, being in any legislature, uh, whether it's in, in Albany or, or Washington, wherever, you have to be able to work with others. You have to be able to build consensus. It's all about building relationships so you can actually get things done. No one can achieve anything on their own when you're in a, a, a body of 435 people. You have to yep. work with others to get things done, and that's what I've been trying to do in my first 100 days here, introducing legislation uh, with Republicans, uh, working with my counterpart over in, in the Syracuse area, Mr. Katko, who's a Republican, on issues that impact central New York and the Mohawk Valley, uh, getting amendments passed. We've had four amendments have passed passed so far in the House uh, to help veterans, to help expand broadband into small towns and rural areas. Those are the things that I'm hearing most about through the, uh, through the office, and those are the areas that I'm trying to work on uh, during my time in Congress. As, as it relates to your colleagues, and, and you mentioned the media, the questions you get from the media, does work on things like prescription drugs and the border, does that go on, or does this Mueller stuff in Russia, has it paralyzed D.C.? Because that's all we hear about. It goes on. Now, to be honest with you, Jeff, that's the great that's the great mystery because the news doesn't cover that stuff. But it does go on. There are hearings that are taking place, have taken place over the last few weeks, continue to take place on how we lower drug costs. And there's going to be legislation that comes out of the House this year on lowering drug costs. Hopefully we can get some compromise with the Senate. We just passed a bill to restore net neutrality. One of my amendments passed with that bill to be able to help uh, bring broadband into underserved areas particularly places like the 22nd District, which are underserved by high-speed Internet. Uh, we're going to be announcing a package of uh, bills that deal with veteran suicide, because this is a crisis level right now. Yeah. We're seeing yeah. an uptick in the number of suicides among our veterans, particularly those who are returning home from uh, the global war on terror. It's uh, outrageous, and we have to do something about it. So these things are happening no matter what, but the news chooses not to cover those things because it's it's frankly uh, more attractive to cover yeah. the Mueller report, uh, impeachment, you know, the, the latest tweet that the president puts out there, and that's not what the American people want to hear. But that's all they get uh, yeah. uh, from the, the national media. So I guess I'm going to kind of blend into the national media here for a second with my next question. I also wanted to that's get right. your get your thoughts on there is a line forming around the block for who's going to get the Democratic nomination for the 2020. <laughs> um, are there things that you hear that you like and things you hear that you don't like? Can you can you kind of give us your take on all the candidates coming out, maybe some of the things that are a bit wacky or maybe some of the things that you think you can get behind? Well, it's funny you mentioned that, Jeff, because uh, I want to make an announcement this morning on this show. Um, I, I have decided that I am going to be running for president in 2020, <laughs> and uh, I'm proud to announce it right here first on I the Steelers show. Beautiful. We appreciate it. That's Thank awesome. you. There's enough. If there's enough people, why not one more? Yeah, so. you could add uh, one, there were a couple more over the weekend. It's a good just, resume builder. Yeah. yeah. It is a yeah. uh, large been, field. I've been in Congress for three months. Why not? Yeah. Right. <laughs> hey, if AOC could do it, uh, you know, with the age thing, she would probably do it. So, uh, what, let, No, seriously, to answer your question, though, look, I think it's way too early for me to, to, to say who I would get behind. Uh, look, there's, there's things that I like. Uh, but, again, for most of the candidates I'm hearing from right now on, on the Democratic side, it seems to be a lot of focus on, on the president. And what I say to people, the, the, the reason that I was able to win uh, in an area of the country that's pretty purple uh, and maybe even more red is because I didn't talk about the president. What I said was during the campaign, I'm going to work with the president. If the president's going to put forward things like infrastructure and lowering drug costs, I'm going to meet him halfway and I'm going to work with the president. 
Uh, I want to get things done for this country, not focus on uh, the president. And I think that the, the Democrats do themselves a disservice by focusing so much attention on the president, which is exactly what he wants. Yeah. Uh, they should focus on issues that people actually care about. Uh, that's how you win elections. All right. Uh, and who knows, maybe infrastructure is one of those uh, areas where Democrats and Republicans can work together and get something accomplished once we get past all this this uh, Russia stuff, this uh, Mueller report. Uh, Anthony, Bern- so. yep, go ahead. No, I hope so. I think I, I hope you're right, Bill. Uh, Anthony Brindisi, we appreciate your time. Congressman, uh, first 100 days, thanks for the update, and we'll talk again real soon. Thank you. All right, thanks so much.